Hello there, Felix here. Have you tried to create a pixel art game in the new Godot 4? If so, you have probably run into some problems. Pixels have uneven sizes, jitter when moving the camera, and none of your Godot 3 workarounds really work. In this video I will show you one easy solution to perfectly scale modern pixel art games in Godot 4. I have switched from Unity to Godot about a year ago, and I have never looked back. Lots of things just work better for 2D game projects. But with the update to the long-awaited Godot 4, I ran into some problems. Building pixel art games in Godot usually leads to ugly non-square pixels or jittering of pixel lines when moving the camera, and there are of course lots of different ways to deal with this, depending on your specific game needs. So before I show you my solution, here are some assumptions about your project. I assume you want that modern pixel art feel, that means that you have sub-pixel movement for objects to make them smoother, and you also want your game to just work on any monitor size and aspect ratio. Before getting to the solution, I want you to quickly understand why this happens. We cannot scale a 1 by 1 pixel by a non-integer factor like 1.3 to arrive at a 1.3 by 1.3 pixel, because monitors consist of discrete pixels, so there are no fractions of a physical monitor pixel. So we only have two real solutions, keeping in mind the assumptions we just made. We either scale by a perfect integer scale factor, or we use some form of filtering that smooths the pixel art at least a bit. For now, let's look at the perfect integer scaling methods. In terms of pros, there is super crisp pixel art without like any muddy smoothing. So you could argue that this is the most perfect pixel art representation you can get within our assumptions. Also, it's a one-time setup at the start of a project, so no shader materials or other options to apply to every new game object, nothing to keep in mind. On the con side, we have no perfect control over the scaling factor. Some players might see more or less of the game world as a result of that, depends on your exact calculation. If the game is competitive, that might be a problem. Also, rotating sprites will still be jittery, so maybe just don't rotate. I love the look of this method when standing still, but as soon as you move in-game, it feels like it flickers, even though it doesn't. Maybe it's just me, but I find it very distracting. If you are interested in seeing a detailed guide on setting up perfect integer scaling, let me know in the comments. But now let's look at the filtering shader method. On the pro side, it produces good results for any pixel scaling factor, even fractions. It looks good in motion, and it works with rotated sprites. On the con side, Setup can be a bit more complicated. You will need to make sure to apply the shader material to every object, for example. Every time you create a new one, you need to think of this. And also, pixels are almost never going to be perfectly crisp. But still, overall, I think the filtering method is slightly better than scaling by an integer factor, so this is what I'll show you. The road to your pixel perfect setup is easy. First, you yoink the shader from Captain Potato on GitHub, link is in the description, and huge shout out. Then you create a shader material that uses that joint shader, and on every sprite node you need to now enable linear texture filtering and set the shader material. So either you find some way of automatically doing that to all of your objects, I for example do it with the tool script when I'm importing my map files, or you just always need to remember to do these settings by hand when you create a new object with sprites. Generally, using the settings that let you inherit texture filter and material from the parent node might make your work easier. All of the actual scaling work is then done by Godot and configured in the project settings. My settings are here on screen for reference. You can experiment with this uh, as long as you keep the canvas items as the stretch mode. That's the only really important setting. And that's it. By using this setup, you can achieve a pixel-perfect look in your Godot 4 project without any jittering or artifacts. Would this work for your project? Have I missed something? Leave a comment and help others out. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. And I hope this video was helpful to you, and if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I'm Felix, and I will see you next time.